emergency aid for New York and for Virginia and for the prosecution of what Mr. Bush has called the first war of the 21st century, a war against global terrorism. That deal was reached mo moments ago between White House negotiators, senior members of the Democratic and Republican leadership from the House and the Senate. Sources tell CNN that that $40 billion emergency supplemental spending bill will be on the floor of the House of Representatives sometime later on today, Friday afternoon, maybe into the Friday evening. The Senate is expected to then pass it soon thereafter. This legislation should be prepared for the president's signature no later than Saturday. Also on Saturday, there should be considerable debate on Capitol Hill and passage of a use of force resolution authorizing the president to prosecute that war against global terrorism. But to repeat, CNN has confirmed a deal between White House and senior congressional negotiators over a supplemental emergency spending bill of $40 billion, $20 billion of that set aside for immediate cleanup, rescue recovery efforts in Virginia at the Pentagon and in downtown New York at the site of the World Trade Center catastrophe, and then $20 billion for beefed up counterterrorism activities and also potentially to carry out any activities or any raids, military or otherwise, against those thought responsible for the terrorist attacks here in the United States. As for the President's Day on Thursday, it was very busy indeed on several fronts, not only working with Congress on this supplemental bill and a use of force resolution, but also dealing with the symbolism of healing. The President and the First Lady, Laura Bush, went to the George Washington Hospital Center to visit and commiserate with those recovering from their injuries of the plane crashing into the Pentagon on Tuesday, also talking to some of the rescue workers, responding as the President and the First Lady often must do in situations like this, setting a note of sympathy and extended their heartfelt congratulations to some of those who helped rescue those and sympathy to those who are recovering from their injuries. Also, the president by phone spoke to those who have been on the front line in New York, Governor George Pataki, the Republican governor of New York, and the Republican mayor of New York City, Rudolph Giuliani. From the Oval Office, President Bush talked to both of them, Good morning, thanking man. them for all of their efforts morning, in New Mr. York president. to morning, rally yeah, thank you firefighters, all police officers, call. volunteers, uh, all, rescue efforts, how, uh, and all the work, the massive work that's going on in New York City to deal with the tragedy, the catastrophe there people of New York City and the after concluding area. his telephone conversation with those two leaders in New York the president took a few questions and as the reporters asked him about the gravity of this situation he said the country must be prepared to fight the first war of the 21st century through the tears of sadness I see an opportunity you know, make no mistake about it, this nation is sad but we're also tough and resolute and now's an opportunity to do uh, generations a favor by coming together and whipping terrorism, hunting it down, finding it, and holding them accountable. Uh, the nation must understand this is now the focus of my administration. Senior administration officials tell CNN it was a very important note the president wanted to strike in that response feeling that there is a pervasive sense in the country that this nation will never ever be the same and what the president wanted to do in those remarks is say well that very well may be true but it doesn't mean we will not be the same and all the changes will be negative perhaps just perhaps this country can in fact wage a war that the world will join it in waging that will change the world for the better stressing the opportunity perhaps to do generations of americans yet unborn a good service by dealing with terrorism combating it and hopefully rooting it out. That was definitely a note the president wanted to strike. He had many other notes struck by the administration today. One, by the First Lady Laura Bush, speaking for many Americans and trying to, in some ways, describe the scope of the tragedy. I was not frightened for myself. I was, um, like every American, concerned about everyone who was in the World Trade Center um, and also so unbelievably saddened that something like this would happen in our country and, and uh, that the disregard for life of the people who did this was so profound that uh, they would harm people who were going about their daily lives. And, um, it's, a, it's a terrible, terrible tragedy. Of course, White House staff is trying to also go about its daily lives, but that's much more difficult now than it was on Monday. 
The security perimeter around the White House was extended this afternoon by the Secret Service, extended by several blocks. And throughout the afternoon and this evening, there have been innumerable false alarms, even as I speak to you now, Colleen, in the early morning darkness here in Washington, D.C., a search helicopter hovers over the White House, its searchlight piercing the early morning darkness. It is a sight and a sound I've never felt or seen before here in the nation's capital. Colleen. Major Garrett, thanks very much. Jim. Well, let's go across the Potomac River to the Pentagon, where just a little while ago, flames briefly flared again from the wreckage there. Mark Potter joins us now live. Mark. Hi, Jim. Uh, you're right to char characterize it as briefly. Uh, there was a little bit of uh, fire for a while, but it was quickly put out. Now, the big news here at the Pentagon uh, tonight is that uh, sources say a decision has not been made yet, but the, that President Bush is considering uh, activating as many as 50,000 military reservists uh, to help with the disaster recovery efforts and to um, uh, relieve National Guard pilots uh, who have been standing by or flying combat air patrols around the country. Uh, meanwhile, here at the building tonight, as you can see here, uh, workers uh, continue uh, to work in the uh, rubble uh, under very bright spotlights uh, looking for bodies and for the so-called black boxes from the American Airlines uh, 757 that crashed here Tuesday. Now, earlier today, uh, the county fire chief said officials uh, thought they heard uh, pinging, a uh, pinging sound from one of the uh, uh, boxes, either the uh, the voice recorder or the data recorder, uh, but uh, says that officials uh, looked around in the area and so far have been unable to find anything. At a news briefing, the Deputy Secretary of Defense said that whenever uh, the U.S. decides to respond uh, to the recent terrorist attacks, uh, it will be long-term and widespread. I think one thing is clear is that you don't do it with just a single military strike, no matter how dramatic. You don't do it with just military forces alone. You do it with the full resources of the U.S. government. It will be a campaign, not a single action. And we're going to keep after these people and the people who support them until this stops. Now, uh, meanwhile, back here at the Pentagon, officials now estimate that around uh, 100 90 people uh, died in the attack here on the building. That includes uh, the 64 who were aboard the plane. Uh, one of the survivors of the attack, a uh, Navy lieutenant, talked with us today and said right after the, uh, the plane crashed into the building, everyone rallied uh, to help the injured. It was actually very calm. Um, everybody was looking out for everybody else, different services, Army, Navy, Air Force. Everybody was working together to you know, make sure you need help. And uh, a lot of the civilians were, um, it seemed like a lot more of the civilians were injured than, than the military. And everybody was rushing to everybody's aid to help out. Now, as of late this afternoon, officials say uh, about, said about uh, 70 uh, bodies had been recovered from the building. They are being taken uh, to the Dover Air Force Base Mortuary in Delaware. And for those people who have been looking up into the skies, uh, seeing uh, combat aircraft flying overhead, uh, the Secretary of Defense, Donald Rumsfeld, uh, said that uh, combat air patrols are still being flown in the Washington, D.C., New York City corridor and that fighter pilots are on a 15-minute standby at 26 uh, military bases around the country. And as we leave you, uh, here's another view of the building tonight. Uh, things seem quiet here, but workers are working uh, in the rubble 24 hours a day, uh, sifting through the debris, looking for bodies, looking for the black boxes, shoring up the building so that they can get farther uh, into the, uh, the rubble to, uh, to, uh, to look for the, uh, the, the rest of the victims. They do not expect to find any more uh, survivors here. Jim and Colleen, back to you. All right. Mark Parter. Thank you for that report. Well, as the victims' uh, families try to come to terms with devastating pain, many are telling chilling tales of their loved ones' final moments. We spoke to Deborah Burlingame. Her brother was the pilot of the hijacked aircraft that slammed into the Pentagon. I used to be a flight attendant many, many years ago, so in addition to my brother, we really feel a connection with airline people and have a lot of airline friends, um, apart from my brother. And so we are, we're devastated to see these scenes like this, and, and, and this is just an extraordinary scene. So I didn't know what he was saying. He was screaming, and then I caught him, I caught the word 
chick. It's chick. And there's no words to describe. You know, you hear uh, crime victims' families being told, this is a murder scene. This is, this is a mass murder. Captain Charles Burlingame was one of the 64 passengers and crew on board that Los Angeles-bound flight. Well, President Bush and his senior aides have left the world in no doubt that they consider Tuesday's terrorist attacks on New York and Washington acts of war. U.S. Secretary of State Colin Powell says careful consideration is being given to an appropriate response. So you have to consider you're dealing with a very, very skilled, knowledgeable, thinking enemy. And we just have to think better than them, think back faster than them, and be cleverer than them in order to respond in a sensible way with all of the weapons at our disposal. And one of those weapons is military force used in an appropriate way. It's not so much the size of whatever military response you might have, but does it do the job? Does it get to the heart of the problem? All right, and you heard earlier that President Bush uh, calling these terrorist strikes the first war of the 21st century. So as Washington studies a range of military options to take against those responsible for the attack, U.S. troop strength already is on the rise at an overseas air base that could play a strategic role. Jane Araf reports now from the predominantly Muslim country, Turkey. This is one of the biggest U.S. air bases in the region. On Turkish territory, leased by the U.S., it is, Turkish military sources here say, gearing up for a possible military strike. They say in the past two days, the U.S. has sent in more personnel, adding to the 7,000 troops it already has in southeastern Turkey. Movements in the town surrounding the base have been restricted. U.S. military officials won't comment on the new measures. Since the end of the Gulf War, U.S. planes have taken off from Injerlik to patrol and sometimes bomb northern Iraq, though the economy of southeastern Turkey relies on trade from Iraq. Also neighbor to Iran and Syria, Muslim Turkey is making clear its loyalties lie with the U.S. I don't specify any country uh, in uh, our struggle against uh, terrorism, and we will certainly support fully the Article 5 of NATO. That article, invoked by NATO for the first time, treats the attack on the United States as an attack on all NATO members. Uh, Turkey's prime minister uh, says uh, that means Turkey would allow Injerlik to be used to strike no whoever was Iraq behind the U.S. attack. The there was military and emotional support here, as throughout Ankara huh? Thursday, the Turkish star and crescent, the symbol of Islam, flew at half-staff alongside the stars and stripes in mourning for the dead. But in this country, a NATO member and a Muslim ally of the United States, the shockwaves are still being felt. Turkey's economy also staggered under the tragedy. Already in crisis, the Turkish lira fell further. Uh, we have realized that we will be faced with additional economic problems while trying uh, to deal with the economic uh, crisis. Uh, we know that it's a global problem also. Tourism was hit as cruise ships stopping in Istanbul kept their passengers on board. Like Americans around the globe, those here were told by their embassy to keep a low profile. Jane Araf, CNN, Ankara. Well, searchers have found the flight data recorder from the plane that crashed in western Pennsylvania on Tuesday morning. The data recorder from United Airlines Flight 93 was found in the crater caused by the plane when it, when it crashed there. The passenger jet was en route to uh, San Francisco from Newark when it was taken over by hijackers and rerouted. The passengers apparently tried to wrest control from the hijackers, causing the plane to crash before it reached whatever target the hijackers were aiming for. The flight's cockpit voice recorder, though, has not been found. Still searches going on for that. All right. Well, last December, a pilot instructor in Florida gave flying lessons to two men who claimed to be student pilots from the Middle East. That's right. They're now suspects in Tuesday's attacks, and they may have flown two of the hijacked planes. John Zarella investigates how they managed to pull this off. Unfortunately, sadly enough, Henry George feels pain, extreme frustration, and great regret. I don't want to believe that what I did uh, made him successful.
last December 29th and 30th. That is Opelika Flight 